من الهوليوود بولفارد ووك اوف فيم موجوده اليوم لافتتاحيه الفيلم هانسل اند جريتل والممثلين هلا قطعوا فيتو على تشاينيز ثياتر اللي بيملكوا المنتج ورجل الاعمال الامريكي اللبناني اللي سماحه اللي رح نتعرف عليه بهالحلقه Elie Smeha, thank you for receiving us in your house in Los Angeles. Uh, I know you are a Lebanese-American entrepreneur and producer. You were born in Zahle in 1955. Tell us more about your childhood in Zahle. Uh, my childhood uh, was not easy, actually. I grew up without a father, so my mom was, uh, was amazing. She raised me, my brother, and my sister. Uh, she was a single mother. Very tough on any single mother in the late 50s in Lebanon. So uh, she had a very hard time, you know, because without a father in the family, you know, it's much more difficult. But she was such an amazing woman that um, she was able to raise me and my brother and my sister. And we all worked together for the last 25, 30 years. So she's done an amazing job. So we had a very good childhood growing up. Thanks to my mom, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that uh, since then, you brought some um, bands from London to Beirut and you made some concerts in Zahle. Well, to make extra money as a little kid, I uh, used to promote concerts uh, in Zahle by bringing people like Kamal Shamoun to Zahle and having concerts at the cinema called Opera. Uh, and also brought bands from London, uh, like the Bats, the Strings, and some other bands that they only had to pay $300, $500 for, and made money to, you know, spend. I started working at a very young age to help my mother because I dropped out of school. wasn't so smart in school, actually, so I couldn't pass any of my classes. <laughs> and um, that was one of the main reasons, you know, to help my mom. And uh, me and my brother, we started a partnership promoting concerts mm -hmm. before I left to go to Europe. Yeah. And then uh, you left uh, to go to London. Uh, why did you leave Be Beirut and knowing you had dreams to fulfill? No, actually, the civil war broke in Lebanon at the time. Uh, I don't think I was a big believer of the civil war, which it stood for and uh, had an opportunity to leave. Why did you leave? I spent a couple of years in, in Europe, and then I came to New York. Actually, I came to LA. I had some relatives here. Um, I have an uncle who worked with the United Nations and uh, wanted me to go to school, but I wasn't so smart, like I said. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided not to stay in Los Angeles, went to New York. I used to compete in martial art. So um, I got a job as a bouncer at a club um, called Tunnel, which was one of the largest clubs in New York. And from there, I got discovered by a guy named Steve Lobel. God bless his soul, who's dead right now. Him and Ian Schrager opened a club called Studio 54. Mm -hmm. I worked at Studio 54. 
And you met all the stars there? I got, I didn't know any of the stars actually, and my English wasn't great. So, but uh, with time, I got to meet lots of the people who I end up doing movies with, from Sylvester Stallone to John Travolta to Bruce Willis to uh, um, Robert De Niro to Jack Nicholson to all these guys because they all frequent Studio 54. That was the hottest club to be at in the late 70s, mm -hmm. like 79, 80. Yeah, and uh, you started uh, your own club too? Well, after Studio 54 got shut down, it was raided by the government because these guys didn't pay taxes, it's all <laughs> public information. And um, I opened a, a club in the meatpacking district uh, called Area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was open for about two and a half, three years. Lots of my celebrity friends, the actors helped me, gave me money to get started. And uh, uh, after that, uh, I decided to come to LA in 1984. <laughs> اليوم أمام التشينيز ثياتر على هوليوود بولفارد واشتري مؤخرا السيد إلي سميحة اللي اكتشفنا سوا أنه من هو وصغير يحب الفن ويجيب الفنانين إلى زحلة وبيروت ومن ثم ترك لبنان بعمر ال16 سنة خلينا نكتشف عنه أكثر من بعد هالبريك الإعلاني You came to L.A. in 1994 and you... 1984. 1984, sorry. And I'm a lot older than you think. I no, no. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> and uh, you started also uh, your business in uh, restaurants and clubs uh, Well, I LA. came in uh, either late, late 83 or 84. And I start doing parties because I have lots of celebrity friends. Mm -hmm. And whenever you have celebrity friends, people want to come to these parties. Mm -hmm. So I made a very good living doing that, actually. Private was, parties. Yeah, lots of private parties. Like, you know, we will advertise we're doing a party and we'll invite, you know, a few celebrities and we'll charge people at the door uh, $20 and we'll charge them for the alcohol. And we made ten, fifteen thousand dollars a night per party, which was good money in these days. Mm. Which year did you start your own uh, clubs and restaurants in LA? Uh, in nineteen eighty-five, I opened a club with a woman named Helena. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a very good friend of Jack Nicholson, and uh, she asked me to be her partner because she liked the parties I was throwing. And we opened the club. We didn't get along too well. And uh, I decided to get bought out. And then I opened uh, a club called Roxbury mm -hmm. in 1989 on the Sunset Strip mm -hmm. that became more famous than 54. And there was a movie made about it called A Night at the Roxbury. Mm -hmm. And was it hard to work in this field in LA or at the, uh, it was maybe uh, something you liked? Or did you encounter some problems? It's always fun to work around beautiful people. So one thing I learned from Studio 54, from Ian Schrager and Steve LaBelle was, uh, you know, if you have beautiful people and celebrities in your club, everybody wants What's to be it? there. Yeah. So that was a good uh, learning experience for me. And I implemented that in all my clubs till this day. We still own some of the hottest clubs in Hollywood. 
and it's worked very well because uh, uh, people always want to be around celebrities, whether you're in the United States or China or Russia or Lebanon. Uh, I've taken a few celebrity friends of mine with me to Lebanon and you know people go crazy over them and yeah. they weren't even big celebrities. So uh, I mean that was one way and still till this day what really uh, attracts people and brings them to different mm -hmm. clubs and new clubs and venues. Mm -hmm. So this is the good side of uh, all this. Is there any bad side? Uh, do you encounter maybe problems inside the clubs? You have to be uh, really aware of everything, have security. Uh, maybe sometimes uh, the famous people are the one who maybe start a problem or, or a, any... Uh... I don't worry about stuff like that. I let Steve worry about it, <laughs> that's his job. No, uh, uh, usually, you know, I'm, I'm a very good delegator. Okay. Uh, I think I uh, have done a very good job. We employ over 1,200 people in my company. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a very good person to delegate to people to do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I surround myself with people who has worked with me for the last 20 to 25 years mm -hmm. because I reward them very, very well. And it's very important for the people who work with me that they feel they're part of the team. Of so uh, you're only as good as your people. I'm not that, you know, genius, but I choose people to work with who are very smart, who know how to execute on things. Mm -hmm. So today you own uh, 11 restaurants and clubs in Los Angeles. Tell us more about this. Well, my business. main business is also real estate. That's what we do. We like mm -hmm. to buy our own real estate mm -hmm. and we put restaurants, clubs, bars, uh, design companies, whatever it is into our own real estate. So that's what I believe in. And uh, we pretty much in Hollywood, I want to say, you know, we have some of the hottest clubs, whether it's the supper club, or Roxbury, or Hemiway, or the Writer's Room, or Lure, or Playhouse, or La Vida. These are all clubs that we have. We also have the Pig and Whistle, which is a pub. Uh, so um, we have restaurants called Luca I'm Apartment too also. So it's uh, stuff that I like to frequent and visit myself. Mm -hmm. So these are the venues that we have. They all are different mm -hmm. than each other. So. In 1996, you started uh, the film business yes. and uh, during 10 years only, you have produced more than 108 films. Uh -huh. uh, so I think it's a big success. How did you do all that? Uh, by accident, no, I'm just <laughs> uh, Actually, I was married to an actress. Yeah. I was dating an actress in the early 90s and uh, I managed many other actresses beside her. I had people like... Uh, Christian Slater, Richard Grieco, um, uh, Sly, and some other people. And when you manage actors, uh, they call you at 3, 4 in the morning and say, I'm in jail, could you get me out? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to manage them, you don't make as much money. So one thing I decided to do is go into film producing mm -hmm. because you make a lot more money as a producer. You own the negative on the film. It's like owning real estate. And that was one of the reasons I went in that business to make movies with friends who were, you know, uh, my friends from New York. And they all mostly the same age as I am or a few years older than I am, two, three or five years. And we got to make some fun movies together, which was um, an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you find uh, more exciting, the film uh, business or the restaurant and club? Uh, what I find more exciting is actually uh, real estate because that's what I love most. Uh -huh. uh, the film business is fun, the club business is fun to entertain people. The other one is serious. Business. Well, real estate, the real estate, yeah, the real estate for me is, uh, you know, I like to own trof trophy properties. Mm -hmm. So for me is, um, we have lots of beautiful stuff on Hollywood Boulevard, which we've uh, assembled together over the last 10 or 15 years on the Sunset Strip also. and. Um, I'm going into, I own a beautiful resort called Tubanch Palm in Desert Hot Spring, which is uh, 91 years old, it was uh, built by Al Capone in the 1920s. Mm, that beautiful. was his hideout. It it's has, open already? Oh, of course. Yeah. It uh, has the best natural spring water. Mm -hmm. People come from all around the world to go get treatments there. It has an amazing spa. Mm -hmm. You should go and check it out while you're yeah, here yeah, as my guest. I, I should, thank you. And, uh, it, 
sits on 280 acres of real estate. We're expanding the property by adding uh, another maybe 60 to 80 rooms in the next year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, also I'm building another hotel in West Hollywood, another one on the Sunset Strip. And we're expanding a Chinese theater, which was built in the 1930s, 1931, the Chinese theater opened. Mm -hmm. It was built by Sid Roman. And that's where most of the celebrities' hand and footprints are for the most famous people in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're expanding that concept right now too. Mm -hmm. So I see your future projects are in real estate. And what about the business film? Uh, I'm shooting a movie right now in China. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. uh, I have two young kids. I don't know what happened to Rasha. She'll come and say hi uh -huh. very soon. Um, uh, it's about pandas, called Pandas in the Wild. Okay. About, uh, I made a deal with the Chinese government. It took about two years, so they're allowing us to film right now this movie, and it's great for my kids. It's an IMAX film. It's beautiful. And we're going to do another IMAX film, actually, uh, which can't talk about it right now, but that'll be the next project. and working on another big film at Warner Brother called Extractables mm -hmm. with some big action stars. Mm -hmm. But uh, my love is actually real estate and hotels right now. I really want to build some really nice... Nothing in Vegas, all in LA? Uh, what do you mean, in L hotels? Yeah. I just, I'm building a hotel right now as we speak in, 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 in West Hollywood. In West Hollywood. Yes. But I, I mean, you don't have any project for an hotel in Las Vegas? No, I'm not no. a big fan of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I never was. I don't like gambling. Yeah. I don't like to stay till five, six in the morning. I love having my kids. a great experience for me right now, yeah. so. Yeah. Everybody comes to بالإضافة إلى كونه رجل أعمال ومنتج بارز إليس ميحا أيضا أب والعيلة عنده مهمة جدا رح نكتشف أكثر إليس ميحا الأب من بعد هالبريك الإعلاني <تصفيق> Let's talk about the family. <laughs> yes. I see you love your kids. You have a boy and a, a, a beautiful girl that we saw, Russia. Uh, you were married to an actress, a very famous actress. Russia, hi. So, no, this is my <laughs> princess. So tell us more about uh, your first marriage. Uh, I was dating uh, this uh, friend of mine who's an actress who I managed, and we ended up doing a few movies together. And uh, we got married, and, and it didn't work out. And um, uh, I'm very fortunate, you know, to uh, that in the United States, if you don't get along with your ex-wife, you just uh, get divorced and write them a nice check, and they leave you alone. <laughs> this doesn't happen in Lebanon, huh? not often anymore. It does or does no, not? No, it doesn't. It's not as easy as that. I, I, uh, well, but they get divorces no, in Lebanon. No, they get. More often now. Yeah, because when I left Lebanon, I don't think I ever heard the word divorce over yeah. there. <laughs> and how, how do you, you spend much time with your kids? Uh, are, are you, are you, how, how do you live your role as a father? Uh, I love my kids. I spend as much time as I could with them. I get my kids whenever I have time because I work so hard. So on Tuesdays and Fridays, I try to work half day. Yeah. So Tuesday, I have Rasha here with Ishan, it's my son's name, and um, on Fridays, so they come here at noon and we spend time together. Tonight we'll maybe go to dinner, right, Rasha? 
Mm -hmm. And um, uh, on Saturdays, I have them all day. So I get them two, three days a week. Uh, they'll come during the summer and spend lots of time with me at the beach house, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. swim. And uh, Rasha loves to play the piano like you. Yeah, I, I heard her. And you like pandas? You're excited about the new movie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's going to go to Lebanon this summer. Ah, yeah. Are you excited to go to Lebanon, Rasha? It will be her first time? It'll be her first time to go to Lebanon, ah. yes. So you, you'll have to visit me. You have yeah? to visit her when you're in Lebanon, okay? So I'll take you everywhere. Hmm? <laughs> She's very excited. She has two cousins over there. Mm -hmm. George, my cousin, uh, has uh, two daughters, actually, yeah. her age. Actually, one is younger than her by a year. Um, Angie and... Uh, what's Jane. Jane. So Angie and Jane, their one is six and one is eight, and Rasha is seven. Mm -hmm. So they're going to hang out together yeah. and play. And, and it's a beautiful time by summer in Lebanon. It's We're thinking in May sometime. May, yeah. ah. Right after I go to Cannes, so hopefully, yeah. you know, just Yeah, yeah, go during there. spring. Yes. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag Drifting through the wind, wanting to start again Do you ever feel this so paper like a house of cards, one blow from caving in. Do you ever feel already buried deep? Six feet under screens, but no one seems to hear a thing. Do you know that there's still a chance for you? Cause there's a spark in you. You just gotta ignite the light and let it shine. Just on the night. I see that you visit uh, Lebanon many times per year, uh, Mr. Smeha. Are you thinking, and I, I see you are having some business projects in Lebanon. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, we, um, I'm not very good with location. That's why I asked my cousin, uh, George. Uh, we're building three different clubs and restaurants in uh, uh, on the way to Juni, Antilias it's called? Yeah. Antilias. And uh, they were designed by uh, G Plus. I told you my girlfriend owns the design company. Mm -hmm. So they designed my place, which is going to be the supper club and uh, a geisha house, mm -hmm. most likely, and a rooftop. And um, uh, they also designed the Mahana restaurant, which is building right on the water next to us. Yeah. And um, I think they've done an amazing job because what they designed does not exist anywhere in the Middle East. Um, mm -hmm. Her partner's uh, one of the number one designers in the United States. She's one best designed for the stuff she's done in the last couple of years. And uh, they're very excited. They all actually, um, my girlfriend was with me in Lebanon uh, two years ago, I think, with her partner. And they looked at the location and uh, they valued the design and you know they done a great job for us so we're very happy we just started construction uh, this year mm -hmm. and we hope to be open next year beautiful how do you foresee lebanon's future uh, we know it's 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 a country that survived 35 years of war 
And if we go now to Lebanon, you cannot, everything, all restaurants and clubs are overbooked. So uh, what do you think? Um, I love Lebanon. I mean, I was born there. How could I not love Lebanon? Um, I would love to have something there. So it'll give me a reason to go there, which is very important. And um, I, could f I, I, I would say I would foresee Lebanon to be uh, the way it used to be when I was growing up, when I was uh, 10 years old. Uh, the hub of the Middle East, the Switzerland of, of the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, because Lebanese people are very, very resilient. Any mm -hmm. other country in the world that will go through what Lebanese people has gone through, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, we, we, you would never survive. Mm -hmm. But I have lots of friends, whether they're in Mexico or whether they're in New York, or uh, if you do your due diligence, you'll find out that some of the most talented uh, uh, people in this country are all Lebanese, you know, they've, mm -hmm. um, they've done very, very well. So I'm very proud to be Lebanese and I hope, you know, when all the um, fighting around Lebanon settles down, I think it's just going to elevate Lebanon to a different level. We all hope uh, so. I've taken several of my active friends with me to Lebanon. I did a few shows over there. Yeah, like and you, stuff. Mar uh, Maria Carey and uh, we took, 50 uh, Cent. We took Mariah Carey over there for a show, 50 Cent, the Pussycat Dolls. And, uh, you know, I took also lots of my friends that came with me there, you know, uh, to Lebanon, uh, different actors who love Lebanon, mm -hmm. who had an amazing time. They love the food. Uh, today, the Lebanese food is the most famous food in the United States. Yeah. In the Thanks whole world, to the I war think. Uh, in Iraq and, uh, you know, Millions of soldiers learning about hummus and tabbouleh yeah, and all of that I stuff. I saw it so, everywhere. There yes. are a lot of Lebanese restaurants here in LA. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, what what Lebanese food is one of the healthiest food in the world because mm. it's all vegetarian. Yeah. It's very healthy. Yeah. And it's very and there's organic. There's a, a wide variety of uh, dishes. Yes, so. and you know, uh, and lots of people in this country who are vegetarian, uh, it's not very difficult for them to really go into a Lebanese restaurant and they have a choice of maybe mm. 20 different things they could order that are great. Yeah. I don't think I could live without Lebanese food. <laughs> Do you think one day you, you may settle uh, down in, in Lebanon or it's very difficult? Uh, I'll be lying if I told you I would do that, but because, you know, I've been here for over 30 years uh, and um, I will be visiting Lebanon as much as I could. But we have too many businesses here, you know. Mm. Um, uh, if they ever fix the traffic in Lebanon, I might consider that. But every time I get stuck <laughs> Everybody on tells the me that. autostrad, <laughs> I says, but I'm there's never... traffic in LA too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, at least you have ways to exit from this street to that street yeah. to. Uh, but in Lebanon, when you get stuck on the autostrad, you are dead. That's it. You know, there's only mm. one way in, one you way like out. You like it only for holidays, so. Well, holidays and mm. others, other mm. stuff, you know, I go there. We still have land and properties and homes. Mm. Uh, and now and the new business. Uh, uh, and the new business will give me a reason to go there mm. more than I have gone there in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I can't allow, I want to say uh, I get so used to the American ways. It'd be very difficult, you know, mm. to uh, for me to go and get started again. I'm, at this time in my life, you know, I really like where I am and yeah. where my place is. And right now I'm expanding the Chinese theater, which is we're looking to expand into Singapore and China and other Russia and other places. So that's my goal, expanding that, expanding mm -hmm. the uh, spa that we have, mm -hmm. the hotel to Bunch Palm, to other countries. So, you know, it's a very large word and mm -hmm. there's lots of Lebanese people everywhere, you yeah, know, indeed. whether it's Brazil, which is an amazing place and I love and uh, or whether, you know, we go to just expand in the United States. It's such a large country, you know, you have 325 million people in this country. Mm. Uh, Mr. Smeha, you have a, a great career with a lot in real estate, in clubs and restaurants and film. Uh, business. There are many people who, you know, they have maybe negative point of view around uh, your career and uh, other praise you. What do you tell uh, to those who praise you and what are your comments to those who don't? 
the last thing I worry about is what people say. When people stop talking about me, that's when I should get worried. <laughs> so uh, to me is, I've only been a believer of what I could do and what I could deliver. Uh, there has been times uh, where people didn't think I could produce one film and I don't need to prove to anybody, but uh, you know, uh, whether it's the New York Times, the LA Times, or the Wall Street Journal who has had me on the cover, speak for what I've done and what I've accomplished. Uh, owning the Chinese theater in Hollywood uh, could speak for itself. I don't need to. I'm not really uh, very impressed with what people think. That's mm -hmm. something that never was a big concern of mine. Uh, to me, is I only care about my health, my family, my mother, uh, my kids. And as long as I have my health and my happiness, I don't care what other people really think. Right. You know, lots of people uh, in the world, you know, they think they could do things better than you could, and they could probably, you know. But for me, as I've always surrounded myself with people who I know I want to be around, you know, I've managed to uh, get where I am just with the certain beliefs of what I could do on my own. Sure. I've never depended on other people. I've never uh, counted on other people. But for me, there's one thing that I believe in. If I put my head into something, I know I'm going to get it done. Yeah, and that's it. Do you have uh, a last word to all Lebanese uh, watching you tonight? It's very easy to talk about things. Just go out and get it done. <laughs> Thank you very much and bravo for your career and thank you thank for you. this beautiful uh, and interesting uh, interview. Hope to see you very soon in Lebanon. Of course, I'll be there in the next few months. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. الحلقه تعرفنا على رجل الاعمال والمنتج اللبناني الامريكي الي سماحه وتعلمنا من خبرته بالحياه وايضا قد ايه مقرب على كل الممثلين الامريكان البارزين بهوليوود انا من هوليوود بولفارد بودعكم وبشوفكم بحلقه جايه Voir cette émission et pour plus d'infos, visitez notre site internet www.mtv.com.lb.